How's it going everyone? I am Jeremy Alexander and welcome back to another pixel platformer tutorial. So we are finally getting around to doing some enemy AI now that we have our level. The enemy AI is going to make our game fun. It's going to give us a purpose here. So we're going to make it very simple and here's how we're going to do it. Now I already imported the sprite of our snake and to do that you should know by now from our character sheet it's the final four sprites and it's just a walking animation, so it's nothing crazy here. But hopefully by the end of our AI tutorials here, you'll be able to take the other ones, the other characters that come with, which have the same sprites and animations as our king, and you can make a complicated enemy with it. I think it's a simple uh, but effective AI method that will let you make cool AI stuff. So all I did was I put our origin point to the bottom, and I gave us a nice collision box like this, and then I called our animation ID walk. So in case we want to use the animation later, there we go, which obviously we do. So let's exit out of this and let's look at our properties. Now I gave us a few properties here. I gave us two behaviors. I gave us a platform and a destroy outside layout. The destroy outside layout should be self-explanatory, but I gave us a platform behavior. Now this platform behavior, you might be saying, why do we have that on our enemy? Well, the reason is because we can disable the controls altogether, and then we can simulate the controls. So that's what I did. I turned off default controls, just like we did with our player. So now we have our enemy, which has the exact same properties as our player, but we're going to go in and we're going to control them with a variable. So I also added two instance variables here, a state variable and a speed variable. Now the state variable is going to control our walk left, our walk right, our jump and our attack. So it's very important that we have it this way and it's actually very simple when you actually use the platform object to help you out. The other thing is we have a speed variable for our enemy and this is what we're going to do with this. We're going to tie this number because it has an initial value of 150. We're going to tie this to our max speed. So I put our max speed down to 150 and I put our jump strength down to 450. We're not going to tie anything to the jump strength but we're going to give every single instance of the snake a different speed so 150 being the fastest we're going to tie these two together and then we can just you can make it as fast or slow as you want and that'll hopefully just make for more fun gameplay okay so then the final thing that i did was i created a new event sheet called enemy event and i added it to our level event here so we have our enemy event and our player event and i have my to-do list right here which you can see in all of my other tutorials or courses and what we're doing here is if we have something to do, it's added to my bookmarks bar. And if I finished it, I can just remove it. There we go. So that's all I've done. Those are all the changes I've made in the interim from the last tutorial here. And let's get started with our enemy event. Let me stop talking. <laughs> so what we're going to do is we're going to double click and we're going to go system for each. Now we're going to create a loop. And this loop is going to tell us what, like it's going to say, for each instance of our snake object. That's what it's going to say. So it's very important that we have everything that we do inside of for each because we're going to have more than one instance. Whether we spawn it in or we just copy and paste and put a bunch of snakes there, we need to have this to control every single one individually. Okay, so once we're done with that, we're going to create a sub events. We're going to hit B on the keyboard and we're going to say object snake compare instance variable of state and hit OK. Now what we're going to do is we're going to control C and control V a few times. So we'll have four and we're going to say the next one is one. The next one is two and the next one is three. Now let's hit Q on the keyboard to actually comment out what they're going to be. So the first one's going to be the snake walking to the left. Uh, that will be enemy state zero. Enemy state one is going to be walking to the right. Enemy state two is going to be jump and enemy state three is going to be attack so this is our state engine for each instance now each instance could be at a different state at any point in time so let's start to set this up a little bit further so by default if we look at our snake here and we go to our instance variables you can see our states at zero which means that it's going to be walking left every single time here and we don't want that exactly so what we're going to do is we're going to minimize this double click system type in start and say on start of layout and put it on top. So on the start of the layout, what's going to happen is in the snake object, 
we're going to set the value of our state to choose between zero and one. So choose between walking left and walking right every single time we start the layout. Now we have a little bit more of a dynamic gameplay. So, you know, if we look at our layout here, you can see that it's facing to the right, but now we have a chance to choose between zero and one. So maybe this time it'll go to the left and actually attack you right off the bat. So, okay, let's make it do something when it actually picks the state it wants to go to. So if it wants to go to the left, then we're going to say add the action of our, of our enemy to simulate the control to the left. And let's control click down. We're gonna say the same for the right, just like that. Now, if we are already facing to the right, then we are not mirrored. So let's say object snake, set mirrored, not mirrored. And let's copy this, so control click and drag. And let's make this one mirrored, because if we're going to the left, then we will be mirrored. So now we've handled our walking, which is really important. Okay, cool. So what we need to do next is we need to handle our speed. And like I said, we're going to tie our speed variable to our max speed. So here's how we're going to do this. On the start of the layout, we're going to set the enemy speed, so set the value of enemy speed to choose, and now pick a bunch of numbers. And of course, you can do this a different way. But this way is really easy. So we're going to say 120, 150, 75, 50, and 100. So the lowest speed and the slowest it can go is 50, and the highest is 150, which is our max speed. So let's hit OK. And then we need to tie it to our max speed. So let's do that by saying object snake set max speed to enemy, oops, sorry, self dot enemy speed and now this should let us for every single instance choose a different speed or at least one of these and there we go should let us choose one and when we debug I will show you exactly what I mean so hopefully I'm not going too fast I think I'm going a little bit faster than I usually do but hopefully you are understanding exactly what is going on of course the download will be available at the end if you are confused but hopefully you can follow along and Bear with me. Okay, let's set the jump up. It's going to be as simple as control click, drag for our jump, and let's call this jump for right now. I think that's good for right now. I don't think we need to do anything else. And let's just set our collision real fast before we, I don't want to overload you. So let's do this. Let's say if our snake has a wall to the left, and let's copy and paste. Let's say if our snake has a wall to the right, let me zoom back in, then let's set the enemy state, set the value of the enemy state to 1 for walking right, because if we're hitting the left wall, then we want to flip and go to the right, and vice versa. If we're hitting the right wall, we want to go to the left, so we're going to put that down to 0. Now, in case this doesn't work, let's do an additional check by hitting C on our event, and let's say if our object, we can type in collision with object collision. And let's copy that down as well. So let's hit save and let's see what's going on in the debug. So let's go over here. Okay, cool. So it's kind of working. It, it is working. It's working perfectly fine. If we go to our snake object here, you can see that our choose, our speed has been given a speed of 120. And our state's going back and forth because it's stuck here, which means that we have to fix that in the next one, which we will. But let's see what happens if I refresh. It still went to the right. Let's see if we can, there it goes. Now it's going to the left, and let's look at it. Cool. So it's got a speed of 100 there, which is really, really cool. So now we are starting to set up our enemy AI, and eventually we will be able to just destroy it like this with the L key. So thank you so much for watching the first part of our AI tutorial. I hope you learned it, and I hope you were able to follow along with me. If I went a little too fast, I apologize. But now that we are all caught up, we should be able to go a little bit slower in the next tutorial and finish up our AI. So thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.